Okay, so I didn't post last night because my electricity went out and it's just finally come back on. Um, I mean, I had a generator, but that does not affect my Wi-Fi. So last night I was going through my newsfeed on Facebook. You know, as great as Facebook is, it does have a habit of pissing you off. Anyway, I got to see this lovely speech that uh, Tom Cotton spoke. Now, he's not one of my favorite people. I mean, I remember when he first started running, I was like, okay, you know, he's a normal guy. He's one of us. Uh, since and, and, you know, I probably wouldn't have known much about him if not for Trump. <laughs> um, that's how inconsequential he is, or our lawmakers are here, to, to regular folks. So, anyway, Tom Cotton, he was speaking about um, abortion bans, and I'm with him on not after 18 weeks. 18 weeks is plenty of time to figure out I don't want to have a kid. Plenty of time to figure out I'm pregnant. <laughs> so I don't hate on I don't hate on him for for wanting that. One of the first things he said was he described an abortion as a violent attack on a fetus. Okay, I'll give him that. If the fetus feels things, I'm sure that it sucks. Here's what he said that really bugged me, though. He was calling um, pro-choice people, basically, pro-abortion extremists. When I think of a pro-abortion extremist, I think of some guy who runs around with a knife killing, uh, stabbing women in the stomach that are pregnant. You know, just going, going around that abdomen and killing babies. Or maybe they rip the baby out and stab it in the head. That is a pro-abortion extremist. Pro-choice, and I think I've said this before, pro-choice does not mean pro-abortion. It means I am for it being your decision. Now, Tom Cotton had this problem about the CEOs hefting their weight around and perpetrating their agenda by, you know, like Netflix saying, we're not going to film in Georgia anymore. We're not going to give money to a state whose politicians are trying to take away the choice of whether or not to bring a child into the world. Okay. I'm sure there are plenty of rich people and rich CEOs contributing money to the NRA. There's lots of babies being killed by guns. You know, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, there's lots of stuff going on because of guns. Do I get mad because people are supporting the NRA? No, that's their money. If they want to give their money to the NRA, let them give their money to the NRA, you know. I'm not going to say, oh, they're a big NRA contributor, you know. No. That's their money. It's their company. And if they want to take a stand against something, it's their right. Just like Donald Trump sits in this super influ influential position. He can say what he thinks all day long. He is in a position to be an influencer. All day long. If he says, I only use Angel Soft toilet paper, there's going to be a whole bunch of Angel Soft so people can say, I wipe my butt with the same stuff Donald Trump does. You know, do we, but do I boycott Angel Soft because Donald Trump says I use Angel Soft? Not me. Me, I'm going to say, so, I mean, at least he admits he uses the bathroom unlike Kim Jong. You know, he's not the supreme leader. Um, you know, and it, so, you know, them putting, them saying, we don't want to give money to these, we'll take our business elsewhere. 
That's their right. That is not them trying to push things. He also said that these companies, uh, I remember Netflix, Disney, and Planned Parenthood, he said that they have been quoted as saying that babies are bad for business. Since when are babies bad for business for Disney? Hmm? Babies are like, I mean, aside from the Star Wars franchise, babies are pretty much their bread and butter, or have, have been in the past. Now, maybe they don't want their employees having babies, but they're not going to fire somebody because they get pregnant. They'll fire them for some other reason. Of course, in Arkansas, you can get fired for because you look funny. As long as it's not considered an actual disability, they can just get rid of you. So, and Planned Parenthood, obviously, Tom Cotton has never been in a situation to need Planned Parenthood, but Planned Parenthood not only provides abortions, they provide birth control. They provide condoms. They provide, they have people that come in, these OBGYNs, so that people can get prenatal care if they're uninsured. They help you file for your Medicaid if you're pregnant. My oldest would not have had any prenatal care if not for Planned Parenthood. I can't say I saw a steady OBGYN there. They used doctors from uh, doctors that were in their residencies from UAMS, but still, it was a one stop shop for me. And I liked that. I was comfortable there. And that's why all three of my kids, you know. So babies are not necessarily bad for business for them. You know, they're not, they're not in this big money making business. They're in this Planned Parenthood business that sometimes parenthood is not planned, so you make sure that you're not a parent. So, I don't have a problem with CEOs trying, using their money to influence decisions. They've been doing it for decades. Or trying to, or if they're trying to sway public opinion. Been doing it for decades. It's nothing new. What I do have a problem with is Tom Cotton and people like him twisting pro-choice people into baby killers. Like, we want all these abortions to happen. No. Most pro-choice people do not want abortions to happen. We would prefer that those babies were adopted. There's lots of people that want to adopt. But we don't want to make that decision for somebody else because we got this whole thing called free will and, and choice and, and all that. And sometimes it's just not in the cards. You just don't want to have a baby. And to force somebody to have one is just wrong. I mean, it's, it is it is fundamentally wrong to tell a 13 year old girl who's scared to tell her parents she's pregnant that you now of course that 13 year old girl she has to have some kind of parental thing but um, a 18 year old woman who's been raped and doesn't tell anybody she's been raped telling her she has to have that baby that's just wrong now, I mean, if she chooses to have it, that's, that's her choice, you know. More power to her if, she, if she's willing to go through all that. Not me. I mean, I, I, I often say I would never get an abortion, but I think in certain instances I would. Um, you take a, a drug addict who says, I don't want to quit drinking. I don't want to quit doing drugs. Or I can't. And that's going to mess up a baby. Nobody should have the right to tell her she cannot. Nobody has the right to tell her that she has to have that baby, that she has to bring that baby into the world. That is not anyone's place. It's not the, you know, and, and especially not a man's place to tell a woman she's going to have a baby just because she got pregnant. 
I mean, because I'll tell you what, there's a lot of women. I mean, if, if there was a way to switch over, you know, like saying, oh, okay, well, I don't want to have this baby, so how about I give it to you to carry and give birth to? I guarantee you men would feel a lot different about the right to choose if, if it came down to they could get pregnant. And people like Tom Cotton, and I'm not going to say Tom Cotton, because in general, I mean, not him specifically, because I don't know about his life. But people like them live under different standards than the rest of us. When we graduate from school, it's, I didn't get any scholarships. I can't afford to go to college. Or, I got scholarships, but I've still got to come up with so much money. You know, I'm, I'm going to have to work a full-time job. Whereas people like him, and not, like I said, not necessarily him specifically because I know he was a soldier. He didn't necessarily come from privilege. But people like him, most of the people in D.C., their kids graduate from, from high school and it's, hmm, Harvard or Princeton or Stanford, or ooh, how about we get fancy and go to Oxford in England, you know, and there's no, I'm going to have to work, no, I'm going to pledge Phi Beta Delta, and I'm going to be king of the hill, I'm going to party down, and I'm going to get a degree, and then I'm going to be just like my daddy, oh, there's a draft, I ain't got to go, my daddy's in Congress. The same thing goes with abortions. These guys have a daughter, and they're in the public eye, and they're like, oh, she's unwed, and she's pregnant? Oh, no, honey, you ain't having this baby. You're going to a clinic in Switzerland, and we're going to get this taken care of. But they want to tell people at my level that you're going to have that baby. You're going to bring that baby into the world. And if I'm told by a doctor that that baby is going to be special needs, a lot of people are not mentally prepared to handle a child with special needs because a lot of adults have special needs. <laughs> you know, uh, stress is not good for us, and a special needs kid is stressful. God love the people who choose to take in special needs kids. God love them. That is a great thing. Most people can't handle that. Most people, if they want a kid, they want to bring home a healthy, bouncing baby that is going to reach all his milestones at the appropriate time. If he's a little slower, no big deal. But if they realize that their kid's going to be wearing a diaper or going to have to be in... I know a lady, for instance, um, she was told, and this was before Roe versus Wade, she told me this story about her son. Her son was born blind, deaf, and she said mentally retarded. He never surpassed the age of a six-month-old baby. The, mentally, he was never older than a six-month-old baby. Now, they knew when she was pregnant that he was going to have a lot of problems. And she tried to abort him. She wasn't ready to be a mom. She tried to abort him. It didn't work. But it left her with this, this baby who has been in the state's custody his whole life. His whole life, the state's been taking care of him. He can't feed himself. He can't speak. He can't see. He can't hear. He doesn't know people. This is a grown baby who has been institutionalized his whole life because even 
with his care, he couldn't even go to, like, even if somebody would have said, well, I take in special needs kids. This kid had too many special needs. If the government would have let her go ahead and abort him, because she was a very young girl, her parents would have approved. They would have allowed it. But it wasn't legal. And they didn't know anybody. So she used a hanger. And now you've got this kid that is grown and he should have never been. You know, some people say, oh, well, you know, she could have not done that. He still would have been pretty messed up. Because um, they said the blindness and the the mental retardation, those were not caused by what she did. Those were caused by genetics. He had a malformed hand. He had a lot of issues going on. And, you know, when I see something like that, I think, you know, why make somebody bring that life into the world? You know, she loved him. But he's not capable of, I mean, and that's the only kid she ever had. She never had another kid. She was so scared that she would have another kid like that. So she never had another. And, and all of that could have been prevented if she was just allowed the choice of having an abortion. Because she would have made that choice. And then she wouldn't have had those fears. She might, And she would have been a great mom. She was, she was mom to the rest of us. Um, and that, that kind of stuff is stuff that I don't think Tom Cotton has any idea about. It's not the type of stuff that women normally tell men. Um, that's the type of stuff that women tell women. And... And I can't get too pissed about a woman speaking out against abortion because at least she's a chick. She understands what it takes to bring a kid into the world. And when you absolutely do not want to do that, nobody should be able to tell you that that's not an option. Plain and simple. So... Tom Cotton needs to butt the fuck out of it.